you must realize that there are millions of people in india who love your tradition who love your culture your religion your history the fact that you are who you are I saw Mr. Rahul Gandhi. You were the cutest boy I ever saw. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting me here this evening. I have not come here as a professor. I have come here to understand from you what you expect. I have come here to listen to what your concerns are, what your worries are, so that I also have a sense of what the young people of Mizoram are feeling. Now I am happy to take your questions. My question is, uh, what are your thoughts on implementing common civil code for all citizens of India? Um, what are your views on uniform civil code? There is talk of uniform civil code, but there is no documentation about what this civil code is, about what they are proposing. So until something is on the table, it is very difficult for me to comment on something that is in the air. But I will tell you that I am firmly committed to the idea that we are going to protect your right, your culture, your religion, your tradition. There is no compromise on that. I want to say one thing about this. If you are, for example, in Mizoram, you will think what is happening in Mizoram is very important and what is happening maybe nearby is not so important. But in the 21st century, everything is connected. For example, if global warming is taking place, the problem is actually somewhere else. But it is affecting Mizoram. In the same way, it's important for you to understand that a lot of the problems that you're facing, the problem also lies outside. I would like to ask you this question regarding your recent visit to Manipur. You have seen all the atrocities and the violation of human rights and also the violation of the constitution. The same constitution which your family have been preserving for generations. So can you give me an opinion from your visit not from a political point of view, but from a humanitarian point of view. If you went to Manipur, there were now suddenly two Manipurs. One Meikei Manipur, another Kuki Manipur. And essentially, it is the result of a particular type of politics. Politics of anger, politics of division. And politics where we are not able to see the similarity between us. That we only see the difference between us. And clearly, there was an element there of the BJP wanting that type of thing to happen. It didn't just happen on its own. I mean, I'm in shock that the Prime Minister of India has not gone to visit a state which is burning for the last four or five months. I think there's a space for love in politics. It's a, it's a strange thing. The word is never used. Have you ever heard a politician use the word love? Except me. Right? You use it every day. You seek it, you talk about it, but in politics, it's not spoken. So I think that word needs to be introduced into the political language. Hello, sir. Namaskar. What is your perspective on the National Education Policy 2020? And what aspect do you believe need further refinement or improvement in? In my view, the education policy is trying to distort what knowledge is, what Indian history is, what Indian culture and Indian tradition is, and tries to impose one idea on India. This idea of uniformity, this does not work in India. India is pure diversity. Even if I start talking to you, every single one of you has a completely different view. For example, a very interesting thing, BJP leaders will constantly give speeches about that English is bad. Go to any one of those leaders who are saying English is bad. Every single one of their children goes to an English medium school. Why? Because English allows you to communicate to the rest of the world. And they don't want the poor people of India to communicate to the rest of the world. Right? If that things did not happen, you lost your grandma and your father, do you think that your life uh, particularly in politics will be a little bit different than now. Losing my grandmother and losing my father were terrible things. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. 
but they also made me much stronger than i would have been so that's sort of the experience that when you've lost something that is so valuable to you then you're like okay theek hai i went through such a difficult thing then what is this this is nothing that attitude you get i i must say two things look i'm always fascinated by mizoram when i come here if you walk in mizoram you will find the people nicely walking on the side with you no pressure no what i'm saying is why because you have a concept of space of the other person you have a concept that look there is another person here and i have to guarantee that person his space i cannot just go and take his space respect that the other person also should have a space should be allowed to live happily that is inside your culture deep that's in your dna and that's something that i learned from and i understand many many things from you it's not just from you your ancestors your tradition your history the people who came before you i want to leave you with the idea that we are never ever going to let that be challenged there's no force on this planet that can suppress your culture your tradition your religion good evening sir my question is outside of your political role what's a book a hobby or a life experience that has had a profound impact on your perspective and approach to leadership can you share how it has influenced your journey in public service many different things influence me i read quite a lot i play chess i do martial arts i, I don't sing i'm not as good a singer as you are Rahul ji, I wish you that next time your visit will be after your prime ministership. Thank you very much.